Thanks very much, Mac, and thanks to the staff of the Lincoln Institute for having me back. We're talking, as Mac said, about $70 billion estimated that states and cities spend in the name of economic development. That's an estimate by Professor Kenneth Thomas. Every kind of fee or tax that companies might normally pay to support public service goes away, sometimes becomes negative even uh, for long periods of time. And just to talk about the situation right now, it's little known that the number, total number of deals for which states and cities could compete actually crashed before the recession, dipped a little bit more in the recession, and as of 2014 was still not back to 47% of 1999 levels. Uh, so supply of deals has been uh, depressed for a long time. Demand in the form of anxious public officials looking to be aggressive on the economy to get reelected has been elevated at the same time. <clears throat> As a result, we're seeing a, sp a spike in what we call mega deals, essentially nine and ten figure deals. Whereas we used to have, you know, five or ten a year, now we're having 20 or 30 of these really huge gold-plated deals per year. The Teslas, the Boeings, the J.P. Chase Morgans, et cetera, et cetera. And the cost of these programs has also uh, more than doubled, whereas it used to be two to four billion dollars a year in announced deals we've had as high as <clears throat> over 16 billion. That was the year that the Boeing uh, deal, the 8.7 billion deal in the Washington state spiked. Little, maybe a little bit of relief last year. Hard to tell if that's really a trend or not. They're not unique to any particular part of the country. They're in all kinds of different industries. Manufacturing still heavily represented, but not, not the, the, the whole story by any stretch of the imagination. Chris Christie has set an all-time record. He's done nine nine-figure deals uh, at the same time as he's had nine credit downgrades. I'm not saying there's a direct relationship, but <laughs> these things happen. Um, and six of those are over $200 million, actually. <clears throat> Nothing like having a celebrity CEO whipsawing five states against each other and a governor months away from his reelection fight. <clears throat> $1.3 billion, two and a half times the original asking uh, deal uh, for the Tesla uh, Giga factory, the, the battery factory that's going to go uh, going in near Reno. We've had New York State subsidizing a foreign uh, microchip maker to the tune of one billion, one million dollars a year, 1.2 billion for 1,200 jobs. Some of those jobs have since been lost. The, the cost per job is higher now. But the state taxpayers obviously can never break even. These workers will never pay more, a million dollars more in taxes than public services they will consume over their working lifetime. <clears throat> it, uh, the mega deals that we've documented, the average cost per job was $456,000 per job. Again, all got to be net losers for taxpayers. <clears throat> it's even gotten so bad in the incentive game that it's not that we're just reducing corporate property taxes and corporate income taxes and corporate sales taxes. We're actually giving them other people's money. These 16 states allow 2,700 companies to keep some of their employees' state personal income taxes to the tune of about $700 million a year. Yes, we call it paying taxes to the boss. That, that, that really is what we mean by that title of the study. Only Kentucky even sort of kind of notifies people that, that it's happening. Nobody really knows that it's happening. <clears throat> Among the uh, hurting, you know, desperate uh, beneficiaries of this program are Goldman Sachs for jobs that used to be located in Manhattan and then jumped the Hudson to Jersey City so that about two-thirds of the new, payroll the new payroll taxes are now not going to Trenton but instead going to Goldman Sachs. <clears throat> We also have this crazy situation where cities and counties grant property tax abatements, create TIF districts and enterprise zones, uh, abating or diverting large sums of property taxes, especially for long periods of time, 10, 15, 23, 35 years. It's kind of an intergovernmental free lunch because in most states, school boards are powerless to protect themselves from this problem, even though they're the biggest uh, revenue losers. And uh, we think that's a crazy situation. We have this thing called tax increment financing about which we're actually jousting with GASB right now about whether it's covered by the new standard but but it's a real issue in a lot of states one of our favorite pinatas is the Chicago TIF program which now covers 30 percent of the land area of the city here's one TIF district alone in the central loop which diverted a billion dollars almost in revenue over its 23 year life in the central loop TIF was absolutely a political issue in the school closure fight a few years ago in Chicago when Mayor Emanuel closed 50 schools abruptly, mostly in poor and people of color neighborhoods. It was absolutely an issue in the teacher strike uh, later on as well. TIF is a problem because the word blight means nothing, right? So this is a wealthy uh, suburb of St. Louis called De Pere. It's about 20 miles from Ferguson. 
you can see it's a terrible location right next to an interstate. And this Westfield is the Australian REITs. And they declared one day that we're blighted, uh, you know, because we don't have our Nordstrom yet. And the town fathers said, you're right, you're blighted. Let's give you a TIF district worth $31 million to make sure you can get a Nordstrom and not be blighted anymore. And that was upheld at the highest court uh, of the state of Missouri. We've documented $1.2 billion in bricks and mortar subsidies to Walmart super centers and stores and warehouses around the country. <clears throat> Obviously, it's a predatory business model growing largely at the expense of existing grocery stores and other kinds of retailers. <clears throat> at a time when 23 million people are officially rated as living in food deserts by the Department of Agriculture. And, and now, I don't know if you noticed, the, the, new, the, the fresh wave of closures just announced by uh, Walmart, including the two food deserts they were allegedly going to address in Washington, D.C. that are not going to get a grocery store now that where land had already been cleared and people had already been dislocated for the footprint of the stores that are not arriving. We have mapped more than 5,000 deals in 13 metro areas looking at the, and the geographic distribution of incentive deals through the lens of sprawl. <clears throat> and here's uh, an example of the most lavish single program then existing in the state of Michigan called the Michigan Economic Growth Authority. Every um, diamond is a deal. There's about 81 diamonds on that map. Exactly one is in the city of Detroit. Exactly zero are in the 10 most densely populated inner ring suburbs of Detroit. They're basically redlining Detroit. This has everything to do with the state's, with the city's fiscal health and, and uh, lack of job creation. Uh, these are, again, the most lavish single program on the books at the time um, of the, uh, both the Engler and Granholm administrations. And those deals occurred during both administrations. These are enterprise zone programs and so-called community reinvestment area <coughs> deals in um, the Cleveland metropolitan area. The city of Cleveland is there at the heart of Cuyahoga County in this map. All those blue arrows are outbound deals. 80% of them are outbound. These are companies getting paid to move around within the same metropolitan area. We've documented this in, in the only two states where such data exists, which is Ohio and Minnesota. And if you look at these through any metric, uh, neighborhoods that have had the most plant closings, neighborhoods that have the most tax base stress, neighborhoods with the most poverty, highest unemployment, people of color, where people can get to work by transit or not. These are all bad news. They're taking jobs away from people who don't own cars, people away from neighborhoods with high unemployment. We've even documented that three out of four large <coughs> for-profit private prisons in the United States already profitable based on like cost plus contracts, right, have also gotten tax breaks and other kinds of low cost financing and economic development subsidies. We're even subsidizing lifestyle, you know, outdoor sporting goods stores. Both of these chains, which are now in merger talks, have received more than a billion dollars, Cabela's and Bass Pro, most of it TIF financing uh, all over the country, dozens of deals uh, for both companies. In 2013, we had the spectacle of something we've never seen before in U.S. history. We had a governor turn interstate job piracy into a partisan sport when Rick Perry visited six states who all happened to have governors of the opposite political party, complete with advanced radio and TV ads featuring Rick Perry, paid for by taxpayer money despite his le uh, misleading disclaimers. Um, and since he stopped that after we called him out on it in our study, but uh, Governor Scott of Florida has sort of picked up the mantle and done a couple of these partisan job piracy trips since Rick Perry left office. Again, never happened before in U.S. history. I mean, obviously, interstate job piracy is not new. Partisan, overtly job, partisan job piracy, never before seen. We also have a hyper concentration of the sort of corporate rich getting richer. <clears throat> Even analyzing once all the data in our subsidy tracker database, we determined that fewer than a thousand companies accounted for three quarters of the recorded money we had captured in all the disclosure online records that we uh, compiled there from states and cities and counties. <clears throat> and when we dug deeper into a, a large sample of programs in 16 states last year, looking at company at programs that were facially neutral as to which what size of company was receiving them, we discovered the bias was even worse, that 90% of the dollars of these programs were going to large, multi-state, multinational, et cetera, companies. So we are now in the first year of Statement 77, that is for backward-looking comprehensive annual financial reports for calendar 2016 and beyond, which is to say fiscal 17, every gap compliant 
state and local government body, and, and that's not all localities, but it's most, probably three quarters, they will have to report how much money they lose to each economic development tax break program. It'll be accrued data, it's just one dollar figure per program per year. But significantly here, for instance, in the intergovernmental free lunch category, school districts and other bodies of government that lose revenue passively as a result of the activity of other bodies of government, cities and counties creating TIF districts and abatements and enterprise zones hurting school districts, the school districts will have to report. They'll have to figure out how much money they lose and report it. Huge news. So for everybody who has been arguing all these years that there's better things to do with this money or that the, the opportunity costs are being obscured because we, all the politicians want to do is talk about the benefits and never own up to the costs, finally, in about 15 months, by the second quarter of 2017, we're going to start getting costs all over the place in ways we've never had it before. That's the big news. And with that, we can take it away. Great.